Welcome everybody. My name is Dahlia Pascalidis. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Comfy. Like most of the world, the Comfy team is currently complying with government mandates to shelter in place at home uh, for the coming weeks to limit the spread of COVID-19. Don't be fooled by my virtual background. I am in fact dialing from my home. Um, and I'm joined by my Chief of Strategy, Erica Eaton, who's also dialing it from home. Hey, Erica. Hey, Thalia. Hey, everybody. Great to be here. So there's no question we're in the midst of an unprecedented shift in the way the world is working. Hundreds of millions of people um, are a few weeks into the world's biggest involuntary work from home experiment. Uh, companies around the world are wrestling with how to keep their employees safe, productive, and engaged, while also figuring out how to cut costs, optimize their real estate portfolios, and prepare for an impending economic downturn. So at Comfy at Siemens, uh, we pride ourselves on working at the nexus of the digital and physical workplace. So we wanted to take some time to share some of the conversations we're having about how we can help our clients navigate these uncertain waters. So Erica, what are some of the challenges you and other business leaders are discussing right now? Yeah, well, I think um, as surprised to no one really, right, the situation is rapidly evolving and, and really changing day to day. Um, and so a lot of the questions that we're discussing are, are similar to what we're hearing from our clients and really, I think, what most companies kind of around the world are trying to answer. Um, and first and foremost, most importantly, it's how do we ensure the safety, the productivity, and really the engagement of our workforce and of our employee base. Um, the second really is, you know, what really happens when the physical workspace is really only available to critical staff. And, and really, how do we kind of in this world of working from home, work to accommodate different schedules, different needs, and really importantly, recognizing that every employee and every employee situation is, is going to be different. Um, and finally, you know, what can we put in place today and be thinking about now that will really ensure a smooth transition when we do finally get to kind of go back into the office? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That makes sense. I think today's state of affairs is definitely posing a lot of different challenges for companies. Um, and you and I were talking yesterday actually about some of the long-term implications for corporate real estate leaders. Can you walk us through your take and, and I'll show a quick uh, visual aid to support your, your story. Sure, sure. Um, you know, and I think what kind of catalyzed our conversation yesterday was earlier this week, I had seen on LinkedIn um, a, a post that kind of sparked a, an interesting debate. And really, it's the question of, you know, at the conclusion of this, what are we likely to see? Is it going to be kind of a, a rush of employees back to the office? Um, or are we really going to see most of our workforce kind of embracing the work from home mentality um, and really kind of rebelling against traditional office? space. Um, you know, in my personal opinion, I, I think it's going to be a mix, right? I think back to kind of the fact that everything is situational right now, I think we're going to see that there's going to be variety, right, between it, uh, whether that be between industries, whether it be specific functions that we find are more likely for this desire to work from home. Um, and again, each, each kind of circumstance that uh, employees find themselves in. That makes sense. And yeah, a lot of people are going to love working from home and some not. It sounds like it'll definitely result in a, a more fluid and variable workforce. So what does that mean, um, you know, on the workplace strategy side? Yeah, um, you know, I really anticipate there's going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, probably two primary pressures that real estate uh, leaders are really going to be feeling. The first, you know, with an impending economic downturn, it'll be to reduce costs, right? So how can they be looking across their entire real estate portfolio globally to find opportunities to reduce costs? So whether that be leases that are coming up for renewal, um, opportunities to shed kind of square feet where they can, but really kind of looking to drive greater scrutiny to, to kind of rationalize um, expenses. The second, again, I think is going to be this pressure from their employee base specifically. And so really looking for a need to how do they deliver more flexible spaces to meet sort of, as you called it, a, a fluid workforce. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what that really creates is, is an opportunity for companies to really build a culture and a work, workplace strategy that can kind of deliver on flexibility, on unassigned seating, on open workplace designs. Um, so I'm, I'm optimistic there. Yeah. So do we have any lessons learned from, for how to do that successfully? 
We do, you know, Comfy has been lucky that we've been able to work with many companies as they, they kind of try to implement these practices, albeit I would argue probably on smaller scale. Um, and what we've learned is that what they need is really transparency and visibility. And, and really that's for both of these stakeholders that we're seeing kind of both employees and real estate leaders. Because if I think about kind of that highly mobile employee um, who might be now working from home one or two days a week or working out of multiple offices, what they really need is sort of access to more information and or information about resources or amenities or services that they need um, to kind of help them in that mix of environments. And then that same data we believe, you know, can obviously drive real estate leaders with actionable insights to help their real time decision making again about how they're placing resources across a global portfolio. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so thank you for walking us through that, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about that last part, you know, about flexible working and agile workplace design. You know, Comfy's worked with several of our clients to adopt activity based working. Um, when we consider the traditional hurdles of flexible workplace design, what will be different today? Yeah, in, in the past, I think what we've seen in working with our clients is that there are many forward looking real estate leaders who are, are actively and have been trying to implement these flexible work designs. And typically some of the headwinds that they feel is pushback from the actual business unit leaders um, who fear kind of a reduction in productivity or a change in experience or ability for their teams to kind of connect and collaborate in a more open environment. Um, and my hunch is that sort of this work from home experiment, experiment excuse me, um, will really prove out and, and even put pressure on those business leaders to begin to accept more of this model because they're going to hear from their teams that this is actually the way that they want to be working um, more and more. And, and so it really helps the real estate leaders potentially be able to implement this more broadly or more quickly. Yeah, that makes sense. And with flexible working becoming more of an imperative for different companies, you know, how do you see corporate real estate leaders, what are, what are they doing to adapt to this new normal? Yeah, I mean, I think while we still don't know, obviously, when we'll be able to go back um, into the office and what that might look like, I do think one thing that's probably pretty certain that we feel confident in is that when we do and as employees start to return to work, companies anticipate the need to continue to accommodate social distancing practices mm -hmm. um, for some period of time, you know, um, which again, I think we don't really know yet um, how long that'll be. But some of the things that we've heard from clients um, that kind of help more of this behavior change that we need to then start to implement with employees. Um, some of those practices include, you know, physically moving specific services or amenities to prevent overcrowding within corporate campuses, or even eliminating some of them entirely to kind of eliminate that uh, potential for overcrowding. The second is we're actually in discussions with some clients about how Comfy's uh, desk booking feature can actually create some restrictions on how and where employees are able to book desks. So we ensure kind of a safe distance um, from one another. And I think a lot of this, what it's kind of driving customers to is to really establish a new benchmark or baseline um, for occupancy so that we can be actively tracking what really is safe um, density in sort of this new working environment kind of post return to the office. So I, I see some potential here for how technology can help. Um, how do you see technology playing a role given, um, given the need for you know, this type of uh, you know, tools to adapt to the change? Yeah, I mean, I think kind of coming back to just the importance of data and transparency, right? Um, we obviously think kind of analytics can help really provide and drive that visibility into some of these key metrics that I think will be really important for real estate leaders to continue to track. Um, so some examples that you, you see here is really utilization at a desk floor or portfolio level, the ability to actually look at that over different periods of time. So how do I track in a, in a post COVID-19 world versus mm -hmm. a pre? Um, and, and how do I kind of start to understand that? And, and really, I think it's having this data easily available and accessible is going to, again, be pivotal for real estate leaders 
to make quick decisions, right? And when we think about some of the programs that will likely be implemented again in the vein of social distancing or ensuring safety, um, this data will be pivotal to know how successful those programs are or ways that they might need to change over time to drive these best practices. Yeah, and I think you you mentioned a little bit about you know Comfy's kind of desk booking feature, and you know in a world where there's you know fewer employees coming to the office and they want to practice social distancing, how that can help. You know, what are some of the other ways that um, you know uh, the Comfy employee facing app can help keep employees informed about you know all the changes going on on their campus, or you know what services might be changing as a result of um, you know people more and more people working from home. Yeah, I think this has been interesting where kind of folks have been asking, you know, what's the purpose of a workplace app in a world where we're working from home? And I, I think what yeah. we found is that it's it's not just necessarily a workplace app, really. It's really a centralized way um, to inform employees or to kind of, excuse me, centralize a lot of the information or resources that, that employees need, regardless of where they are. Um, and so we really think about that in terms of localized content, right? I think a lot of what we've seen from um, government recommendations, it's, it's that it's, it's highly localized, right? We're starting to see some, you know, at country level, but each different, you know, county has been making um, decisions around recommendations for, for general public health. And so when you think about the importance of what that means for you know, an enterprise customer who's got employees all over the world is how do you make sure that employees are seeing what's relevant both at a corporate level, but but to their local geography. Um, and so again, we, we sort of think about that at Comfy is, is sort of the way that we're able to, again, kind of configure specific things on a site by site level, but make sure we're, we're continuing to deliver consistent corporate messaging as well. Um, and so just kind of one example of that is um, one client who has sort of an internal website promoting the latest information and recommendations to employees about COVID-19, we were able to sort of implement that into their company homepage so that, again, whether employees are at home um, or are a critical employee that they are on site, they're able to quickly open up Comfy and see the latest information and connect mm -hmm. out to any other third party um, information or, or tools that they need. Um, so I think that's been, again, kind of matching this global local information gap. Um, we found that the Comfy homepage and homepage cards um, have been helping clients drive that. That makes sense. It's very um, kind of a, an easy way to kind of get that localized information out, but still kind of maintain that, um, you know, uh, consistent kind of experience and branding, you know, no matter where you are, um, you know, as part of your global company. Um, Thanks, Erica. This has been super helpful. And, and what should our listeners, um, you know, take away from, from our chat today? Yeah, I mean, I think it's been hard to kind of obviously stay on top of all of, of the news and we continue to monitor it, monitor it um, certainly for our own employee base, but as we're working with clients to kind of help make sure that um, we're doing the best we can kind of in this, this new state of normal. Um, but I think if, there, if there's sort of one thing, I, I kind of come back to what we were talking about earlier, which is the fact that, you know, we're seeing in real time workplace strategy uh, be defined and, and redefined. And so I think one thing that we, we can sort of say, even though we're early in this process, is that there's going to be high variability, right, in mm -hmm. the outcomes of this. There's going to be a highly fluid workforce that's really looking for more optionality in how they work. And ultimately, I, I think what that can lead is opportunities for real estate leaders to, again, deliver on some of these key pressures of of offering that flexible workspace, making sure that we're, we're influencing behavior where we can of employees, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and also driving cost savings as we need to. Um, but in order to do all of that, again, I, I think you have to have a certain level of data transparency um, serving both of these, these kind of employee base and real estate leaders. Um, so it'll be interesting to see more and more um, over the next days and weeks kind of how this evolves. Yeah. No, well said. Um, so thank you everybody for listening. Uh, you know, we know this is a rapidly evolving situation and um, that's posing a lot of new challenges for our industry. And so we'll, like Erica said, be tracking and staying in touch with you all about the latest. Um, we'll continue to host these sessions um, and share any knowledge and communication around, you know, what our clients are doing, um, how we can help. Um, so stay tuned for more from us. And we'll see you soon. Thanks.